signing up to do volunteers in South Africa carried out the NGO's tracing mission in Botswana. We meet Zhen Mingshou, who helped make the new Southern Four Isles National Park of Taiwan a reality. Welcome to Die Headlines. I'm Helen Nell. Thank you for joining us. The threat of Tsuji continues to gain momentum in Africa as volunteers recently traveled to Botswana to help the needy. The group of 10 volunteers visited the capital of the country where they offer aid and a simple introduction so local residents could learn more about Tsuji. Here in Habarone, the capital of Botswana, Tsuji volunteers along with local volunteers are conducting home visitations. This is the love from Taiwan. They rado, they drunk, Taiwan. Suji. Ami to for me is Monimo Are Tuesday. Master Zheng Yin is the founder. Among the eight recipients this time around is Orang Kang, whose family's income is solely dependent on the odd jobs her husband finds. Volunteers respectfully bow as they offer their family much needed aid. Walking with difficulty, cerebral palsy patient Naniki leads the volunteers to his house to meet his 24 siblings and his mother. Volunteers ask everyone they meet to come and get to know Tsuji better. Faced with a certain downpour, the group takes shelter under a tent to finish out the meeting. A local resident even helped with the translations. With volunteers from various countries and the local Taiwanese businessmen's assistance for sleeping arrangements, the trip went off without a hitch. Although the journey was over 1,500 kilometers round trip, nothing could stop these volunteers from the mission to help the less fortunate. Last year's typhoon Haiyan caused massive death and destruction in the Philippines. Learning from the tragedy, prior to the arrival of Typhoon Hagopit, residents in Tagloban City quickly evacuated to temporary shelters. At city's construction project in Lake Province is still ongoing. Did the typhoon destroy any prefab homes or classrooms? Let's learn more in our next report. As soon as a storm warning is issued, volunteers at the Tsuji Philippines chapter in Manila quickly covered the windows with canvas. Thankfully, Typhoon Hagopit was not as strong as expected. Everyone was mobilized to prepare for Typhoon Hagopit. So everything is fine over here in Tacloban City. We have about 10 households living around the prefab construction site in San Jose right now. Knowing that residents don't have access to food due to the disaster, Tsuji volunteers in Manila quickly organized a hot meal distribution here. As many of the volunteers were in San Jose working on the prefab project, they were able to carry out a meal distribution in no time. Unfortunately, Typhoon Hagopit destroyed some of the prefab classrooms. The typhoon didn't damage any prefabricated homes in Paolo, but some prefab classrooms were severely damaged. Although the classrooms had anchors attached around the sides, they still couldn't resist the strong winds. We will fix the damaged classrooms if the school still needs them, or else we will recycle the materials for future use. Due to the storm, Tagloban City is currently without power, and the local airport will remain closed until mid-December. Therefore, the handover of the prefab homes will be delayed. About 230 prefab homes in Paolo are completed, and we hope to help some 100 households move into the buildings around December 17th. Due to the storm, I think we will need to mobilize some people from the construction site to fix the damaged classrooms. We might be short of people. Despite the obstacle they face, the volunteers are determined to speed up the construction as they hope to ensure needy residents can move into their new homes before Christmas. 
Kuala Lumpur City Free Clinic in Malaysia first opened its doors seven years ago in December of 2007. Although the clinic's initial focus was on local residents, over the years it has slowly expanded the reach of its services to include foreign workers and even refugees. For seven years running, Tsiji Free Clinic Center here in Kuala Lumpur has been open six days a week to care for the poor. I've been coming here for about five to six years. The doctors are great. They really care about us and give us a comprehensive checkup, which is a big help for us. Seeing a doctor anywhere else is really expensive. So we are really grateful that Tsiji is here, offering such services on behalf of us poor. We know that refugees in this country don't have it easy, as many can't find jobs. So if they have any medical or dental problems, this center is a big help, as all our services are free. In public hospitals, refugees face high medical and medication fees. Here, however, everything is free, which means refugees can finally get their problems looked at. Often language barriers prevent us from communicating with doctors and explaining our problem. We are so grateful to Tsiji. Whenever we have a problem, we can come here to get it looked at for free. Thank you. Thank you so much. For seven years and counting, the Tsiji Free Clinic in Kuala Lumpur is making sure that basic medical care is accessible by anyone, regardless of their social or economic status. At its economic peak, China's Dongguang was home to over 6,000 overseas Taiwanese businesses. However, following governmental policy shifts and an economic slowdown in the area, many of those Taiwanese have left. Yet some, having found a connection to the city, have chosen to stay and give back to the city and its residents. Now, Dongguan was once known as the world's factory. At its peak, a large percentage of the world's goods were manufactured here. Today, however, investors are turning elsewhere as the local economy cools. Yet there is still warmth to be had. Several Taiwanese business owners decided to stay and make Dongguan their home. In 2009, they founded a charitable foundation to offer aid distributions and scholarships locally, as well as to offer Tsiji the necessary space or resources. Every Tuesday night, the head office of Taiwanese-owned SR Packaging is filled with activity, as city volunteers gather to hold a study session on behalf of company employees and members of the public. Also present is Tan Xu, who originally hails from Sichuan. Married to a Taiwanese businessman, Xu is now able to speak fluent Taiwanese and an expert in cooking up local Taiwanese delicacies. In fact, her tea eggs are a favorite at the study sessions. She is Taiwan's daughter-in-law. For us here, she is our daughter-in-law. So we will teach her Taiwanese customs and recipes. This three-year-old boy also has a deep affinity with Tsiji. She had been trying to get pregnant for a really long time. So I thought if I joined Tsiji and accumulated some good merit, it would help her realize her wish. I vowed that if I got pregnant, I would bring him and together we would do Tsiji. Together, Taiwanese.
Cantonese and Chinese have become one family as they work on behalf of the city of Dongguan and its residents. Next, we introduce you to the person who helped make the new Southern Four Isles National Park at Taiwan a reality, Researcher Academia Seneca Biodiversity Research Center, Zheng Mingzhou. Back in 1989, when I first started my survey, I recorded an average of 60 to 70 percent of coral coverage in this area. Now, that number has fallen below 40 percent. There are no more clownfish or sea anemone. No one is protecting this area. The most beautiful point of the eastern shoreline is here at Jihui Sanxian Tai. Back then, there were no asphalt roads and not even this pier. Today, Zhen is diving around Sanxian Tai Taidong. He goes around Taiwan at least once a year to record changes in marine life around the island. I've got this waterproof case for my camera. Today I'm here to check on local conditions. Carrying heavy diving gear, Jen says, he is just as clumsy and heavy as his equipment. That's why he has chosen this laborious job. My gear weighs 30 kilograms. It's like carrying a girl on my back. Diving into the sea with his camera, Jen always handles the underwater survey personally. About six kilometers of this shore is covered in corals. This one here is about six meters in height, and the other is six meters in length. They are all porous corals, and they are dying slowly. The deterioration of Taiwan's coastlines did not just start yesterday. Sanxian Tai is simply a reflection of what is going on around the country. There are no more giant clams here. This is the worst area along the eastern shore. All edible shellfish have been eaten. Fish dead because they became entangled in discarded nets, and the sea floor is full of trash. You feel so helpless because there's nothing you can do. Before, I would cry after giving a presentation. No matter how many papers I publish, it doesn't matter. What's the point when the environment is already destroyed? I've known Professor Zhen for 25 years. He is one of the few scholars who is completely dedicated to the environment and raising public awareness. To study corals, Zhen dived near the sea of an underwater volcano and went on to discover new organisms living by the rift of the volcano. He also proved that soft coral can also form a reef. In 2008, his dives around Penghu led to the discovery that mass deaths of marine life in the area was caused by frost damage. I go back and revisit each area because I want to find a way to help make it better. I care about this land and have been calling out to more people. Some researchers or professors undertake their studies because they want to elevate their status, but not him. In his lab, Zhen Mingxiu has some 300 specimens of coral alone. His friends call him the herald of the sea as he spends most of his time under the sea and preaches the message of marine conservation to others. This is a humphead wrasse, and this is a humphead parrotfish. Both are protected. People call me a fool, but a fool with determination can still make a difference. After 20 years, a new marine national park has formed, and two species of fish are now protected. Thanks to his 30 years of hard work, people of Taiwan are now more aware of what is happening under the sea and the suffering of marine life as a result of human actions. 
Since ancient times, orchids have been celebrated in Chinese culture for their beauty and fragrance and appreciated as symbols of nobility and refinement. Next, continuing our report on this celebrated flower, we meet a wood sculptor whose muse is this refined flower. The delicate wood carving of an orchid formed out of a piece of wood is among the masterpieces of artist Huang Xiaorong, who has focused his work on the depiction of orchids. These orchids thrive in difficult conditions. Sometimes they grow on rocks. Why? Because orchids are resilient. They seem like a good topic to study. Huang not only adds real orchids and dead wood to make his sculptures more realistic, but also took up cultivating the flower so he can further study the plant. Even with Huang's experience, carving an orchid out of wood is not always successful. One round slice into the wood and the piece is unsalvageable. Also, if the wood itself is split, full of insect holes, or if the texture is too messy, then the piece won't look right. With wood as his medium and flowers as his muse, Huang Xiaorong has won many awards for his work in capturing the beauty of the orchid. Mm. Also lovers of the orchids are husband and wife pair, Lin Rong Tang and Fan Yue Chao. The pair has traveled all over Taiwan's mountain ranges to document orchids in the wild. My wife enjoys the outdoors. Once when visiting Ali San, she saw native orchids and fell in love. Once after a typhoon, we visited the Tefue tribal area over in Alishan and saw that a tree filled with orchids had fallen over. The flowers were crushed and it broke my heart. I thought it would be great if I could save them all. With such aspirations in the aftermath of Taiwan's 8-8 floods, the two, now retired, purchased a plot of land in the mountains of Ali Shan and built a greenhouse so these fallen plants have a place to live. In the wild, orchids are an apathetic plant. So if the tree branch where they live on breaks off, I will try to save the flowers and replant them on another tree. The Lees share their documentation of these native orchids on their blog to serve as a reminder for all citizens to safeguard these wild flowers. Meanwhile, in Taizhong's Fushun neighborhood park, trees are decorated with orchids. We let our residents know that if they have flowers from events like weddings or funerals, they can bring it by our office. We have volunteers that will replant them. This is why our park is filled with orchids. Now, three years later, the neighborhood park has over 400 orchids, and they bloom beautifully every spring. It's great. First, it doesn't create a mess. Second, it beautifies the park. It's quite enjoyable. Nine out of ten people that come visit us will comment on how beautiful the flowers are. Giving items an extended lease on life has turned this community into a place filled with the aroma of orchids, which provides a sense of calm within the hustle and bustle of the city. Next, we go to Malaysia to meet Sulo Shini, who is another recipient of Tsuji's New Shoots Education Sponsorship Program. Thanks to Tsuji's assistance, Sulo Shini was able to get a prescription glasses. My name is Sulo Shini. I'm eight years old. My hobbies are reading and drawing. A girl who enjoys reading and drawing, Sula Shini has been blessed with a pair of soulful eyes. However, her poor eyesight often troubled her. Doctor the doctor says she needs to wear prescription glasses full time. Without them, she experiences severe eye pain and headaches. The pain is often unbearable for her that she cries. It's very hard on her. I was able to purchase the prescription glasses for her with the financial support we received from the New Shoot Sponsorship Program. Now she won't have to suffer any more pain. 
Murugama and her two daughters are temporarily staying with her father. Nine people from three families are cramped in this tiny space. Over the years, Murugama's father has been the one providing for his grandchildren's transportation costs and other expenses. My father has really helped us out a lot, so I feel embarrassed to ask him for more money. With Suji's monetary assistance, I can use this money to buy books for my children and for them to receive extra tutoring. I no longer have to wait until I have money or borrow from others like before. For Murugama, more rewarding than the financial assistance was seeing her daughter's transformation. We have to bow when we go to the Jinsu Hall, right? And when we see the volunteers, we greet them with a bow. So Sulashini has been observing how volunteers interact with one another, and now she will always bow to us before she leaves for school. At first, I thought it was interesting she did that, but I was glad that she has developed such a great quality. In reciprocation, Murugama now collects recyclables on behalf of Tsuji and works to support her daughter's wish. I want to fill up my bamboo bank so that I can help others with this money. My wish is to become a doctor one day because I like doctors. I hope that my children won't forget all the help they have received and become inspired to help others in need. Cherishing the opportunity to help others, goodness shines through this family's heart. Tsuji volunteer La Yu Kun and his wife Zhang Hui Jin have four children. The loving family of six was living happily when tragedy struck last year. While renovating a home with her husband, Zhang accidentally fell from the roof and was paralyzed as a result. At first, in disbelief, the family eventually pulled themselves together and is now taking on this new challenge in life with love. After accidentally suffering from a fall, Zhang Huijin of Zhanghua, Taiwan was left paralyzed. Thankfully, all four of her 11 children have been willing to take turns caring for her. Undergoing physical therapy is not easy for Zhang, but her daughter is always at her side supporting her. <laughs> Seeing her making progress makes me happy because it means soon she can walk again. Zhang's progress is comforting for the family, as when the tragedy first struck, the family took the news hard. I was overwhelmed and nearly broke down and cried, but I couldn't, not in front of my kids. You still have to face reality in the end. After all, she was my mom who raised me and fed me. At first distraught, we children helped each other to cope with the situation. The children take turns caring for their mother by preparing meals and handling household chores. I am so useless now and can only rely on others. I often think, why couldn't I just have died so I wouldn't be a burden on them? But thanks to the power of love, Zhang has now regained her will to live and hopes to make a full recovery soon so she may continue to serve in Tsuji's missions. In the meantime, her children happily take on her Tsuji duties to keep the love flowing. We go to Taichung, Taiwan at the end of the show, where Tsuji volunteers arrived at a fire scene to care for those devastated by the early morning fire. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye. <laughs>